Hello everyone, I'm Marilyn from City Developments Limited, or CDL for short, and I'm here at the Incubator for SDGs, opened in 2019, a public-private people partnership initiated by CDL in support of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The Incubator, located at Republic Plaza at Raffles Place, provides a rent-free workspace for selected social enterprises and startups with purposes that are aligned with the SDGs. We aim to connect startups with mentors and impact investors to help them scale up and grow their businesses. Come on in and let's join the conversation with Esther An, CDL Chief Sustainability Officer and founder of The Incubator, two social enterprises from our inaugural batch, and Christina Lee, founder and CEO of Global Green Economic Forum and the current manager of The Incubator. Hello, and, uh, Jeremy, JJ, and uh, Christina, and uh, well, really welcome you back. You know, you are our first batch of incubators at this incubator for SDG, and uh, we are really, really so proud. You know, to have seen your, you know, how you have grown over the, you know, the last six or seven years that I have met you when you were only the right. university year two student, right? And then for JJ, I also met you quite some years back, and I'm a fan of your, your, your product. So um, maybe what you can do is to just give a brief introduction of you know, your, your business. Yeah. Hi, I'm the founder and CEO of Simply Good. I'm Jeremy. Uh, Simply Good is essentially a sustainable home care brand. Uh, we produce dehydrated cleaning tablets like this that help to reduce single-use plastics and carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike traditional cleaning agents that are come in a liquid format, uh, they often are tossed out when consumers are done. Uh, what we do is we encourage consumers to reuse the bottle and you know, uh, fill it with water and pop a Simply Good tablet in to reduce uh, carbon emissions. Great. How about JJ? Yeah. Hi, I'm JJ Chan. Uh, I'm the founder of Rehyphen. So what we do, we collect these correct cassette tapes from local and we weave them into pieces of cloth. Uh, and we turn this uh, cloth into music cloth product. So, um, like city map poster, we also have like um, different um, touch bags. This I kind love of this. I have this. And those um, tapes that we have finished weaving uh, is the empty tapes. We turn it into a greeting card. So, which uh, customer could customize their uh, tweet in a tape? So we call it tweet tape, and they could send it to their loved one. Yep. Wonderful. Yes. Nothing go to waste, right? Yes. Yeah. Christina, you are now our current manager here. Yeah, and you are also a very established, you know, um, impact investors and accelerator. Just a brief introduction of yourself. Okay, thank you so much. So um, my name is Christina Lee. I'm the founder and CEO of Global Green Connect. We also run a social enterprise called GGEF, which is uh, the current operator of this incubator for SDG. Uh, obviously, we are a big fan and promoter of sustainability and SDG. Um, yeah, so we are very happy to be here, invited by CDL to be the operator of uh, this incubator for SDG to help impact startup to grow like Jeremy and JJ's company. Thank you. Okay, hi. Congratulations again, Jeremy, for being conferred the uh, Forbes 30 under 30 list right, under the social impact category. Yep. And uh, what we like young startup like yourself is really you stay true to the, anyone of the SDG. Sustainable development is very important, especially in our decade, you know, we are in a, living in a very disrupted world with a lot of challenges, whether it is climate, social, health uh, issues and all. So what we really like, you know, young people like you is the commitment to serve social group and uh, apart from you know making a sustainable business and you're also serving you know sustainable development and uh, maybe you can share a little bit more what drove you to do this and uh, how you have actually grown the business over the last six years right thanks Esther for your kind words and uh, I mean support all along all this way I think we met uh, in 2015 as I remember, I was an undergraduate as a year two student at SMU then. Yes. Uh, we were connected in an SUTD competition called Create for Good. And that really sparked off my entrepreneurship journey uh, as an undergraduate then also to explore the SDGs. Mm -hmm. I think in then, uh, it wasn't too popular. <laughs> yeah, that was like, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. So, I mean, we've simply good ever since we've evolved so much in about six to seven years. And a lot of business building and a lot of challenges have came our way and we've overcome, especially with COVID. Uh, but you know, as I mentioned earlier on Simply Go, what we do is sustainable home care. 
and cleaning. And we're nicely aligned with UNS DG Goal 12 of responsible consumption and production and UNS DG Goal 13 of climate action. And we've always been a champion of that all along our journey. Um, and you know, we've grown so much, especially mm -hmm. across the years. Uh, we've transformed the business and scaled it. Uh, in fact, recently, uh, we've just closed the pre-seed round. Uh, allowed us to move out of the incubator. We have our own office now. <laughs> Congratulations. That's what we want to do. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, we've grown uh, the team uh, to about size of 10 today. Ooh. Just last year, we've launched the Simply Good yeah. flagship cleaning tablets, if you see over here. They are dehydrated formats of liquid cleaning. Helps mm. to reduce single-use plastics. Yes, helps to yes. reduce carbon emission. Yeah. Just last year alone, our pilot, we've sold about 25,000 units just online. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And it just really signaled to us that the market is ready for a sustainable home care solution. Multi-purpose. Yeah, yeah. so we have the multi-purpose, <laughs> the bathroom variant, the window variant. Hmm. It works like a redox on pill. Use a bottle that you have, drop the tablet in, fill water that you really have at home. Hmm. Secret that the industry is telling you is 96% of the places you buy our water. So just why not use the ones you have at home? Hmm. So that's what we've done. And we've grown so much from a consumer market standpoint. Uh, in fact, it's what's really exciting this year. Outside of Singapore, we are expanding towards two other markets. Mm. Uh, very exciting plans that we have. Mm. And uh, along the way, there are also a lot of challenges. Mm. And uh, what we've learned is to overcome these challenges to surround ourselves with very, very great people. And as the founder and CEO of the business, you know, my mentor used to always tell me three things, Jeremy. You have to do right for the business. It means find money for the business to grow. Ren, find people, the right people that you have. Uh, you want to surround yourself with people that are smarter, better than you to build what you're achieving and inspire and we inspire them to follow along the, the journey you have. And Zhao Fang Xiang, which is find direction. Mm. Find the direction for a startup, how are you going to grow the company five years in? And if you get these three things right, a lot of things will slowly fall into place, like puzzles clicking in. If you get one thing wrong, everything will crumble. So I mean, along the ways of six to seven years, it took me a lot to learn. Uh, these things on what to build a startup and I think we are very excited to continue growing. Well, I think um, definitely very useful advice but I also witnessed that you are very resilient and uh, very hardworking and I have seen you, you know, having, you know, meeting here even, you know, just after, you know, uh, open up, you know, from, from COVID, you were here, like, talking to your partners and all that. So, I think, um, really, there are a lot of learning points. But now, let me turn to JJ. And uh, JJ, you know, I'm a big fan of your, your bags and all that because I think uh, we have too much plastic waste in the world, yes. right? Especially ocean, you know, more than, uh, you know, 70% uh, uh, of the waste in the oceans are actually caused by men on land. So was that the reason, you know, why you, you know, go into this business and uh, tell us a little bit more the challenges and also opportunities you have found? Okay, sure. So um, I would like to share what is Rehyphen first. So uh, Re stands for um, backwards or it's also a meaning of repetitions um, again and again, right? And hyphen is actually a sign is link um, both words together, which means that we want to partner with different uh, organizations and brands to come up with different ideas and use our music cloth um, to develop different products. So this is our initial ideas at, at the very beginning when we first started this business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according to the MIT press, actually there are 56 million kilograms of plastic were used to make physical cassette tape since its first launch to the world in 1963. So this is part of the environmental cause uh, in the music industry, not included uh, CD and vinyl yet. Yeah, so we want to um, tackle in these issues and we believe that music is a universal language that can tie everyone together and it has the power to change the world. Yeah, so when we first start our um, rehyphen, we only have 10 cassette tapes on hand. And right now, we have already collected more than 10,000 cassette tapes and we actually run out of our storage right now. <laughs> yeah, so we have been too much uh, um, collecting these cassette tapes and after we have enough supply, and we started to face difficulties in um, selling our products and how we engage with customers. So uh, we started like different pop-up events, uh, different workshops, to uh, engage with our customers. Um, so we have been exhibited in different cities 
with different brands and organizations to target on different uh, customers. Mm, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So as a woman, you know, young woman, you know, entrepreneur, was there any, you know, challenges that you want to share? And also, what would you advise, you know, younger so, entrepreneur like you? I think as a women entrepreneurs, uh, I had an advantage of the skills of listening. Mm. So we listen a lot of customer feedback. So during the COVID period, a lot of customers feedback to us that they miss the music in the cassette tapes. So during the COVID period, we have uh, combined the technology with our product, which uh, every music club products will get a QR code like this, um, where they could scan and listen the QR codes to our special curated playlist in Spotify apps. So each CD met, uh, um, has their special curated playlist and we um, choose the playlist based on the CD moods and character. And now we also launch our CD maps in Quick Shop, uh, Singapore Airline, which um, you could use your Chris Fire mouse to redeem uh, our Music Club CD maps, where those cities are those uh, Singapore Airline will fly to. Yeah. That, that's wonderful. Yeah, indeed, you know, during lockdown especially, yes. we need calm, right? So yes. music is something that you yes. really, really help you to calm yourself. Yes. And I think for whether startup or uh, established, you know, mature enterpri uh, enterprises, marketing is always a challenge. How do you reach out to a bigger network of, you know, consumers and all that? And uh, Jeremy, share with us a little bit of your, you know, bright spots on how to reach out to the right target audience? For us, I think uh, when it comes to marketing, it's about really understanding your product's value proposition, uh, where you stand in the market and how you want to position yourselves. Mm -hmm. And now that we are scaling up, uh, we start to get into a lot of digital marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's what we see and what's scalable today, mm -hmm. especially with e-commerce uh, on this expedite fast track. Uh, we've been using the e-commerce channels to really grow and scale across other markets. Mm. as well. So I think there's a lot of more exciting uh, opportunities out there mm -hmm. for us in play and we are still rapidly testing as a startup. Mm -hmm. DJ, same thing. I'm sure you face the same challenges and all that. So I, I have seen, you know, how you have expanded the usage and also product, you know, range as well. So what's next for you? So the next big plan, we actually want to connect with different organizations to help them to turn their organization ways uh, into uh, new products or new systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so previously we have did some uh, consultation session with some organizations. For example, uh, we designed and proposed um, to post office to use their old school, uh, uh, old postman uh, uniform to transform into a reusable envelope projects. Mm -hmm. So this could help them to reduce uh, part of the packaging waste and also um, change the whole mindset and system in the posting industry. So this kind of collaborations, we are very happy to collaborate with in the near future. And we hope uh, not just our candidate itself, we also help other organizations to turn their ways into uh, usable uh, products. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely circularity is the way forward for a more sustainable world. So, um, well, I understand that your product really, you know, stay true to the whole circularity, you know, concept. Maybe you want to share a little bit more how your, you know, the, the, the product line and the life cycle of your cassette tape okay. and the music cloth. Sure. So, uh, we collect the cassette tapes, right? So, some of you might not see what is cassette tape look like. So, uh, we collect the cassette tapes from local and we weave them into a piece of cloth. We call it music cloth. And we turn them into products like uh, music cloth netbooks. Uh, we have this uh, music cloth clutch bags. And our best seller is our music cloth CD mat posters. Uh, and each poster will write down the original cassette albums uh, behind to remind people about the music. And it, during the COVID period, we also uh, launched this scan and listen features where people could scan and listen to our special curated playlist mm. in Spotify apps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really a circularity of like the ownership also. People give you the cassette tape, you create new product and then you sell it to other owners and yes. then it goes on and on. Yes. And uh, hopefully 
we will reduce the plastic waste in our ocean. Yes. Yeah. So, Christina, let me come to you now. I mean, this two inspiring story. I'm sure you are very familiar with. You are dealing with a lot of, you know, um, social enterprises and startup. Share with us how partnership and, uh, you know, and uh, investment can help them grow and uh, all can work together. Yeah, yeah I, I thank you, Esther, and I echo what uh, Jeremy said, you know, like there are a lot of challenges for startup to begin with, let alone impact startup. And, uh, but we do need a lot of innovative solutions in the market and how could we help and accelerate? And I think, you know, Esther and I, we share the same uh, sentiment or passion is, you know, all about collaboration and sustainability. There's no such thing as called competitions. So how can we help one another? I think, you know, um, uh, like, you know, CDL providing, you know, a space like this. I, I don't think the physical space is uh, uh, essential, uh, especially post-COVID, but it is a essential for bringing people together and, you know, for collaboration, for discussions, and even resources, you know, to share. So I think this is uh, very meaningful, you know, for, for startup. And uh, we see a lot of startups, they go through different uh, uh, incubator and after four months, five months, and then, okay, you go on your own. But like Jeremy and JJ share, it's a long journey. You know, you cannot just dump them after five months. You need to have somewhere to host them and also, you know, providing support. So I think this is uh, where we come in. And yes, you know, money is very important, but also I think finding the right investor uh, and investees are very important. It's almost like dating and getting married because when you are coming into the impact business together, it's for long term. You cannot say I invest and I want out in three years, five years, which is the conventional model. So I, I think, you know, this is a, a really good, um, I would say, a, a, a home, you know, for us to brew more uh, impact startups and that will really make impact and also changing culture uh, like what uh, Jeremy and JJ are doing. Uh, we'll, we have already seen some success cases, you know, coming out from the incubator for SDG already. Wow, certainly. I mean, for CDL, we are a developer and a, a landlord. Why we provide this uh, rent-free, you know, share space for, incubate, you know, for incubating is just what you, you know, share. Uh, we believe in partnership. We believe in, you know, doing together to amplify, you know, uh, ideas, action, and of course, impact. Well, we can't change the past, but we always say that everyone can help to contribute to change the future. And uh, it's, we all stay true to the spirit of the UN, you know, Sustainable Development Goals. And we want to bring a larger ecosystem together yeah. and uh, leaving no one behind. And uh, we are really happy to have like-minded people from different generations, different sector, different industry to work together. And I think we all have hope for the future. Thank you so much again. And uh, let's all keep running and uh, to us a net zero future. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. What an inspiring conversation. To win this race to zero, we need all hands on deck with entrepreneurs working with the support from corporate partners and impact investors. At CDL, mitigation and adaptation through innovation and partnerships will always remain a priority to build a sustainable and resilient future for all. We hope that existing, budding, and future impact innovators continue to dream big and create and innovate climate solutions.